Keep on rocking in the free world. Here we are. We're going to do a struct. So, one, the way we've learned a struct so far, come up here, and we could create, what, a var? What do we work with in Go? We work types. Goes all about types. Goes all about type. Right, so we have values of a certain type. So we create variables. Variable C is of type int. We could also create type person struct. So we created our own type, and it'll be first, and this is like an object. First, and I don't know, do we want anything else? Age. And then we could come down here and we could create a value of type. Uh, person and uh, so we'll do uh, what do we have see I'm getting all messed up E I V F K V we'll do a P1 colon equals composite literal what goes first type, type. and then what and curlies. curlies and values right so if it's a person, it's going to be first, James, age, 32. And we could do another one if we wanted, P2, colon equal, person, first, Jenny, age, 27. And then we could do a slice of people if we want, colon equal, person, or we might just call it people, right? That would be like pretty good naming. P1, P2. So the general convention in naming variables in Go is you want clarity, but you also want brevity. So if you're only using this right here, then you keep it as brief as possible. But the farther away uses of a variable go from where a variable is declared, the more you want it to be clear. So if I had person down 100 lines later, I want it to be named person. But if I'm only going to print XP right here, leave it XP because this is the only place I'm using it. Now, that is not right. I forgot this, right? Slice a person. And if I wanted to, I could range over that again. So for, and here I'm going to do, uh, I guess I'll do, uh, I did key value, index value. I'll do I2 comma V2, colon equal range, XP, thump dot print line, I2 comma V2. So we have a type person struct. And then if we wanted to, we could also do a struct composite literal like this. And this just, you guys, you probably don't want more at this point, right? Less is better. Okay, less is better. Um, so then the next thing is uh, polymorphism and interfaces and functions and things like that. But before we do that, let's do a loop. So for a loop, we're going to have our initializer, we're going to have our condition, and we're going to have our post, init, condition, post. And if you go and you look at the documentation, I don't remember which it is because it's been 18 months since I got to teach this. I'm going to just look for loop. No loop up there in the index. So I'll look for four. And there we got a four. And here we have init condition post or for condition, which is like a while. Or just straight up full, baby. Which is forever.
So in here we might have a break put into there. So uh, to loop for, I've already used index and value, so I am going to use J. For J colon equals zero, J less than 10, J plus plus. What this says is the init initialize J to the value, initialize J as a variable which stores in and assign the value zero to it, short declaration operator, and then run through this loop. When you're done, sorry, initialize it to zero and then check. Is zero less than 10? True. Okay, run through this loop. When you're done, the post condition is to add one to j. Now j is one, is one less than 10? True. Run through the loop again and now add one to j, it's now two. Is two less than 10? So that's how you do it, format print line j. So there's our loop. So we've seen for range and we've seen a loop. And now we could create an embedded type, type secret agent, struct. And that's going to be everything that a person is, and they'll also have a license to kill. And so the inner type promotes to the outer type. Person is the inner type. And it promotes to the outer type, which is secret agent. And then we added another field, so I could create a person secret agent. And I put in the type, composite literal, curly braces, and then values. And so we're going to have a person. Hold on. Let's just try this. I forget. I'm spacing because I'm tired. Uh, this will be, uh, I don't know. Who's a secret agent? Who's that new TV show that's out on Amazon? Jack Ryan. Jack Ryan, thank you. And uh, his age, see it's already kind of, oh look, I got colon equal. It's not liking that, right? Boom, let's get rid of it. Let's do person, is type person first. On after person we need the comma because that's the first one. And then first is Jack, and age is 42. I don't know, on that show, he's like 27, 29. And then we also have license to kill, LTK, true. Done. And then pump.printline. SA1. <coughs> Sorry, took me a second. Elena, Roxanne, Jeff, Z. And uh, so that will print, and if I wanted to, I could do SA first, and I could also do SA person first, right? So I could access values with dot notation. And then uh, we're going to do... What next? Add some functions to them. So how do we attach a function? A function is going to be func, receiver, identifier, returns, nope, params, returns, code. Okay, so we're going to do func. And the receiver here is going to be p person. 
And let me just move this all, all up. And the identifier will be speak, and uh, then our code. And we could have thump dot print line a person or p first says whatever. Right? We could add in here something that they say. Which means we got to come down here and add it in. Is that political commentary? I just think that's confusing. <laughs> I think I'll make it. Blah, 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 blah. There we go. So now they have all, they all have a saying. And, uh, and then I could have a, a method attached to Secret agent also speak, and uh, and that one maybe is So those are, uh, you know, each function is attached to a, any value of type secret agent. So secret a, this speak is attached to any value of type secret agent. This speak is attached to any value of type person. I'm going to create another type. And that type is interface. So type human interface. The underlying type is interface. And any value that implements the method speak also implements type human, implements the human interface. So an interface says, hey baby, you got these values, you're my or you got these methods, you're my type. So then if I had funk foo, and if funk foo took in a human, I could call speak. So both any value of type person and any value of type secret agent are also going to be type human. So any of those values can be passed into foo. And it'll call the method which has been defined for each type. So I come down here and I could just do foo. If I wanted to, I could do it this way, p1.speak, p2.speak, sa.speak, sa1.speak, just put a little divider in, but I could also do uh, foo and pass in p1, foo, pass in p2, and foo, Pass in secret agent one. And then that's polymorphism. Being able to pass values. These values are of different type, right? But they are also of type human because they implement the interface so they can be passed in. Just part of the language. And that kind of brings us up to where we were. 
Did I leave anything out? You want to run it? So it all ran. And you can see here that for type person, type person had one speak method which got called, but then type secret agent had a different speak method. Its implementation of speak was different because it says even more, whereas the implementation of speak for a person only is says. Cool?